Good evening. I will call to order the City of West Bend Licensing Board for November 9th, 2020. And notice that we have four items on the agenda, first being the approval of the Licensing Board regular minutes for September 28th. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. It's been motion second. Any discussion or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor, sit by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Moving on to agenda items for consideration. Number two, coin and precious metals or stone dealer license for Mueller Manufacturing and Repair LLC, Mouse Jewelers, 930 South Main Street. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. It's been motion second. Any comments, comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, sit by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And number three, a secondhand jewelry dealer license for Justin Mueller of Mouse, Mouse Jewelers at 930 South Main Street. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Any questions on that? Seeing none, all those in favor, sit by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And item number four, extension of premise for Meyer Stores Limited Partnership, Meyer Store number 299 at 2180 South Main Street. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor, sit by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Being no further business for the licensing board, I'll adjourn. I would like to call the board to or order the Board of Public Works. We have two items on the agenda. Uh, item one, no, number one, Board of Public Works regular meeting, October 19, 2020. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those, uh, any corrections or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number two, approval of a long-term storm water management practices maintenance agreement, Oak Brook Dental. Good evening, Max. Good evening, thank you. Um, this item is one of a typical um, long-term storm water management practice agreement that <clears throat> we enter into with property owners that obtain a storm water management permit for their property. This development is for Oak Brook Dental um, at 2115 and 2121 West Washington Street. Uh, <clears throat> they have a new development where they built a two-story building with um, associated parking lot. And so they submitted a stormwater management permit um, <clears throat> and they have um, improvements to properly manage the stormwater, including a pond on the south side of the property. And so we enter into an agreement with the property owner to make sure that they will maintain their stormwater management facilities so they can function as intended in the future. So this is the typical agreement um, specific to this property and we recommend approval by the board and council. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? For Max, if there are no questions for Max, um, all those in favor? Say all right. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Being no further business before the Board of Public Works, I adjourn. All right, uh, with that, we are gonna move over to the finance uh, meeting. Uh, so I will begin by calling that to order. Um, first on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from uh, the October 5th meeting. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, second on the list is a little different tonight. Uh, I'd like to give a brief presentation to my fellow aldermen, um, just a little bit more in depth of a look at the budget. Um, I know obviously we have a common council hearing um, and the public hearing tonight uh, coming up shortly. So I just want to um, go over a few slides with you guys, if that's okay.
All right, and, and this is what I just handed them so everybody can follow along on the screen here. Um, all right, I just wanted to take a minute and kind of share with you guys on the council some graphs that I made to kind of help people here understand um, my thoughts on the budget and uh, more importantly, how we're trending in our spending uh, for the city of West Bend. I am a strong believer in the goal of our budget should be raising only the amount of taxes that we need to fund necessary functions of the government while doing the least amount of damage to the economy and also respecting our taxpayers. Um, so with that, I've prepared this. Um, this is kind of a budget overview of the city of West Bend. Uh, this slide here shows the levy dollar amount represented each year by a blue line. Uh, along the left is the dollar amount and then along the bottom is the year. Um, the black numbers um, to the left of each blue line is going to be the percent increase or decrease of the levy from the year prior to that year. Um, if you look to the far right of the graph, you're going to see 2021 has two lines. Um, so we have a blue line and also a red line. Uh, the blue line on the far right is the proposed budget as written. Um, that is going to require a tax increase on our residents. And the red line is what I'm proposing this year for the budget, which would not require a tax increase on our residents. The red line is really, really good news. It shows West Bend is in a good place. Um, our levy is doing well due to things like new construction. Uh, we're financially in a good spot coming in, and I don't think that we're going to need a tax increase. Um, so again, you can kind of see the 4% versus the 5%. Uh, if we maintain the 7.85, we're going to increase our levy 4% to last year, and that's not requiring a tax increase. Uh, so that 1% difference is the difference between raising taxes and not. With that, I know people uh, might want to look at this in terms of dollar amounts instead of just uh, percents. So here's kind of what it looks like in the dollar amounts. So as you can see, the red bar, which is maintaining the 7.85% tax rate, not a tax increase, we are going to grow the levy 4%. Um, that equates an additional $909,662 dollars to our levy to operate the city um, from last year. So what I am proposing is 22.7 million versus 23.1 million. Um, if we look to the right, the far blue line, uh, that is the 7.94, uh, the tax increase. Uh, we're going to get an additional 239,723 more dollars from the tax increase. Uh, that's the small green tip of the, of the right chart here. That is the increase that we're getting um, versus if we stayed the same, we're growing still at a $909,000 that we're going to be giving to spend in government versus what the budget is written as, which is an additional $1.1 million. Um, if we look back over the past few years, we can see the dollar increases and in the levy. Um, so looking back to 2018, we increased 366000 uh, 2019, 625,000, and uh, in 2020, the uh, 371,000 uh, dollars. So the proposed $909,000 increase that does not cause a tax increase to our residents is already two and a half times more than what we've given to the budget in past years, and and more than we've given in the past 10 years of my of my chart. Um, so what I'm asking is that we remove 1%, this little green tip, $239,000, um, so that we can spare our taxpayers an increase during this pandemic, um, during a year when we're already giving the city more money than we historically have to operate on. Um, I feel that the 4% increase, or $909,000 in addition, that we're already able to put in from the levy from last year, we should be able to make work. Um, I just also wanted to consider a few other uh, a, a few other factors here. Um, inflation, the inflation rate projected in 2021 is 2.2%. So even with a 4% increase to our budget, we're still outpacing the rate of inflation. Um, if you look at our past three years of levy growth and the tax rate, um, you can see that we have increased 2 to 3%. Uh, with the tax rate remaining flat, down uh, about 72 cents, up six cents. Um, but this year, we would be able to provide an additional 4% or $909,000 in keeping the, 
the rate flat, um, opposed to the budget as written, which is up 5%, uh, 1.1 million, and then the eight cent increase on taxes. Um, uh, also, looking at the future, um, the real person uh, personal income, so adjusting after inflation, it grew 2.7% in 2019. Um, it's going to increase or did increase 1.7% in 2020, and it is set to decline by 0.3% in 2021, um, meaning our taxpayers are going to have to do more with less in their own personal budgets. Um, also, West Bend is scheduled to be uh, have a reevaluation year on property coming up in 2022, uh, meaning that probably the values of houses is going to increase between five to 10, depending on the percent, um, meaning that not only are we giving a tax increase this year, but we're probably gonna value their property at a higher percent next year and we'll collect more tax money that way as well. Um, I know I touched on this briefly before, um, but just some other factors that I really think are important is that the Wisconsin residents are you know, facing layoffs, furloughs, and closures. Uh, the unemployment rate in September was 5.4%. In 2019, uh, it was 3.4%, so we're seeing higher unemployment in our community. Uh, lots of large area employers have announced layoffs. Um, local businesses are asked to operate at 25% capacity. We had our non-essential businesses closed for a period of time um, due to the state mandates. Um, Wisconsin Food Share, the food stamp recipients in Wisconsin have uh, increased 21% since 2019. Um, also, I know there was some talk about how private and public sectors can't necessarily be uh, compared. I did want to say the public sector, the UW system has announced mandatory furlough, furloughs across all their campuses. Um, and then the Washington County employees are taking a five-day mandatory furlough in 2020 as some budget saving measures um, that we're seeing across the private sector um, as well. So in that, I want you gentlemen to know that tonight my motion at council will be um, directly after this meeting. Um, I'm gonna move that the West Bend Common Council keep the tax rate at 7.85% for the 2020 budget and cut 1% or $239,772 from the budget. This should still give our administration an additional 4% from last year or an additional $909,662 to carry out our city needs in 2021. Uh, it's imperative that our city government be all in with our residents and find a way not to raise taxes this year. A flat tax rate to last year is still amounting to that 4% increase in the levy that still outpaces the rate of inflation, uh, and it's still a more generous increase than we've seen in years previous when not in a pandemic. I believe our city can make this work. I am not trying to mandate any specific items in the budget to be cut, but I will ask one more time that we live within our means and do not pass a tax increase onto our constituents who are facing their own budget constraints this year. Um, and I do have uh, the sources that I've cited for some of those statistics if anybody is, is questioning. So thank you gentlemen for hearing me out. All right, with that, I don't know if we want to have any discussion or we can hold off until the Common Council budget hearing. That is fine. I just. Uh, point of order, there's no motion on the floor to have a discussion. No. So let's move on with the agenda. Perfect. All right, uh, the agenda item for consideration would be the resolution accepting donations to the West Bend Fire Department. I believe uh, Fire Chief Kudiak is here. Good evening. You have before you a resolution to accept two donations to the fire department. One is in memory of paid on call firefighter Lonnie Bournes, who passed away recently, and the donation or the memorial was given in his name to the fire department from another retired uh, paid on call firefighter, Herb and Sally Tennis. Motion to approve. Second. Second one, 
The second one was an anonymous donation uh, that was split between the fire department and the police department. Um, she called me one day to ask how she could make a donation directly to the fire department or the police department that would benefit us directly. So I told her to issue a check for her donation to the city and that came through us and the police department. And you have that before you. Both of those items will probably be used to purchase items for the new fire truck that are not in the budget. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you so much, Chief. Thank you. Uh, and now we have a resolution accepting the Walmart community uh, donation for the drone purchase. That is going to be Chief uh, Moiler. I believe there's two resolutions on there. Um, one is the other half of the anonymous donation that Chief Kudik mentioned. Um, and then the second one is the Walmart uh, donation of uh, $1,500. Um, for the purchase of a drone, uh, we'll have to come up with some other monies, which we're working on right now, to offset the rest of that cost. Motion approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you so Is much, Chief. for both those resolutions? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. I think Chief Kudiak did the first part. <laughs> no, there's two resolutions. <clears throat> We, we, we took action, I assume, on uh, the uh, Common Council resolution. Did yeah, uh, Chief Kudiak spoke, I'm sorry, about three and four was my understanding, and then Chief Moiler spoke about resolution five. All right. I had the fire department being a separate one from the police department. There's two there, different resolutions. Okay, There's I'm sorry. I thought three that resolutions. Uh, I'll, I'll move to uh, accept the Walmart, and I'd like to uh, uh, enter into discussion on all three and thank all of the donors uh, for their generous donations. They're much appreciated. Thank you. Um, I'll second that. Thank you. Oh, does anyone second the? I'll second. <laughs> of the second resolution. Thank Thanks, you. Son. Okay. And uh, yeah, so are I, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Moving on to number six, the approve the City of West Bend accounts receivable uh, writing off. That is going to be Carrie. Good evening, everyone. I had provided you with three lists of accounts that require Common Council authorization to deem as uncollectible tonight. The larger list is comprised of ambulance invoices billed out um, under our contract with our Three Rivers Ambulance Billing Company. Uh, these accounts are mainly from 2019 that have been returned to the city um, by Three Rivers Agency because their collection efforts have been exhausted. The majority of the accounts have been placed in the state debt collection program for further follow-up collection. Uh, they simply need to be removed from our current accounts receivable as an, as an annual accounting practice that I usually present to you guys. Uh, subsequent collections by the state of Wisconsin will result in revenue recognition when we do um, receive payments. The total of the ambulance write-offs is just a little bit over $85,000. The second smallest are invoices uh, that the finance department billed out back in 2018 and 2019 for miscellaneous services uh, that were provided by the city. And similar to the ambulance billings, uh, those for which we have social security numbers or driver's license numbers, uh, those individuals are placed into the state debt, the state debt collection program. Uh, the total of this amount is $728.14, and of this total, uh, a portion will be paid uh, will be charged to the water utility for $83.72. The third list um, that you have in front of you are delinquent personal property taxes, and this list is totaled $5,621.67. Uh, in summary, authorization is required of Common Council to deem the grand total 
as uncollectible accounts receivable for $91,386.21. The finance budget for 2020 includes $130,000 for uh, write-offs and um, also an end-of-year audit adjustment that we do for the EMS. Are there any questions at all? Anything? Uh, Alderman Allen? Um, the, the businesses that are uncollectible per personal property, mm -hmm. those, those are all businesses that are no longer doing business in the state or? Um, yes, it those are the businesses Bend, that or? have uh, ceased operations in West Bend. Is there another question? I'm sorry, Alderman Hugister. Gary, this uh, company that we send to do the uh, collections, what is their percentage of actually getting money back, ballpark? Uh, it actually does vary a little bit. Um, this year is um, because of the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, it's um, a little bit lower, but um, roughly at around June for our budget, it was like a little bit lower for collection amounts uh, than normal. So we normally collect around 50% for the ambulance billings, but it was like 43, 44%, I believe. I have it listed in the budget. So. And one other question. Some of these businesses that owe money on personal property taxes, those are the ones that go into the collection um, through the state fund and stuff to get it back or what? For the delinquent personal property? Yeah. Um, only if um, they're a certain type of entity, we can put them into the state debt collection program. So. So for the state de state debt collection, it has to be a debt of an individual, uh, not an LLC. Um, so most of the ones that are on here are LLCs or corporations that are now defunct, so we can't collect on those. Um, certainly if we have individuals uh, that are doing it, we can enter it in the state debt collection pool. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve took my question, so I got it answered. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Uh, we have a also uh, number seven on the list is approve the fleet leasing program and award the contract. I believe Jay uh, Shambo, city administrator, is going to speak to that. Yeah, so I can give you an update since the last time we we discussed this. We did go out for a proposal, had three proposals in. Uh, those three proposals were listed in your packet and I have the paper copies here. Once we received the proposals, we formed an internal team made up of staff, uh, the mayor and a couple of aldermen uh, served on that inter or review team. And we did not uh, end up doing interviews of the finalists uh, to, are making recommendation to move forward with enterprise. I do see Matt in the audience. If there are any specific questions um, that I can't answer or any member of our staff team or alderman team that were on the review committee. Um, we, we could lean on him for additional questions regarding the program, but this would, if you approve this tonight, we would enter uh, into the leasing program uh, for 2021 and beyond. So can answer any questions that you have, but we've been talking about this for two plus years, actually closer to three years now. And, and I think everybody is confident at least at the staff level to move forward with this. Again, the, the main um, parameters of the program is to put employees in um, safer. Our, our existing vehicles are not unsafe, but uh, these newer vehicles would be safer, uh, more cost effective for the city as a whole, and more energy efficient, fuel, fuel efficient. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Alderman Allen, discussion? Yes, uh, discussion. Uh, when you say 2021, when will we take delivery on the first vehicles? So we'll order them, uh, assuming that the approvals made, we'll probably order them yet this year. And when the vehicles are available is when we would take delivery on them. We can maybe lean on Matt as far as any specifics, but I don't think he knows that yet. It's competitive to get vehicles, like it's competitive to get a lot of tangible items right now. Um, but the sooner, the sooner we move forward, the sooner we'll be in queue to receive them in 2021. 
Okay, the second question is, who were the aldermen that were involved in the process? Mayor, Mayor Jenkins, John Butchlick, and Megan Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, any more discussion? I have a motion and a second, I believe. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, and lastly is going to be, I believe, Jay Shambo one more time, a city administrator on the resolution approving the sale of Mutual Mall. Yeah, I want you to talk about that. So we had previously entered into an offer to purchase uh, for Mutual Mall uh, that is set to close uh, in the next week or two. And this resolution is just ratifying that author offer to purchase authorizing the signing of the deed and any other documents etc this satisfies the title company that the sale was authorized and uh there's going to be clear title from the city so motion to approve second any discussion okay just give an update oh, absolutely. on timing so if, if this passes tonight uh close closing is set for this friday and um, kevin chinaman the the soon to be new owner of mutual mall has an asbestos crew and then the follow-up raising crew coming through hopefully yet this year thank you jay um we had a motion and a second all those in favor Aye. Aye. opposed all right and with that i'm going to recess uh the meeting uh so that we can move into the common council uh before we need to go into closed session so with that i'm going to recess uh, the meeting of finance right. I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn into a uh, closed session it requires a motion megan thank you second <laughs> if i may i think i think what megan is looking to do is recess for a short time the finance meeting and then come back open it back up again after uh, taking a chunk of the council agenda so we can go into closed and then come back without our guests here that yeah. might be here for the public hearing exactly so she could just okay. declare it can recessed. i just okay yeah. so i can recess the the finance committee thank you and thank you alderman kennedy and good evening i'll call to order the city west bend common council meeting for november 9th <laughs> note that all uh, aldermen are president and accounted for please rise for the pledge of allegiance Thank you all. Note that we have 19 items on our agenda and we'll begin with a proclamation. Item number one. This is a proclamation declaring a small business Saturday and it reads as such. Whereas, according to the United States Small Business Administration, there are 30.7 million small businesses in the United States, representing 99.7% of all firms with paid employees in the United States, responsible for 64.9% of net new jobs created from 2000 to 2018, and employing 47.3% of the employees in the private sector in the United States. And whereas 62% of U.S. small businesses reported that they need to see consumer spending return to pre-COVID levels by the end of 2020 in order to stay in business. Business. And 65% of U.S. small business owners said it would be most helpful to their business to have their regular return and start making purchases again. And whereas three quarters of U.S. consumers are currently looking for ways to shop small and support their community, and 97% of consumers who shop on Small Business Saturday agree that small businesses are essential to their community. And whereas 96% of consumers who shop on Small Business Saturday agree that shopping at small, independently owned businesses support their commitment to making purchases that have a positive social, economic, and environmental impact, along with 95% reporting shopping on Small Business Saturday makes them want to shop or eat at independently owned businesses all year long and not just during the holiday season. And whereas hundreds of small, independently owned businesses are located in the Downtown Business Improvement District, Historic Bar and throughout the city of West Bend, serving as the economic heart of our community. And whereas the city of West Bend supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our community. 
Now, therefore, I, Christoph E. Jenkins, mayor of the city of West Bend, do hereby proclaim that Saturday after Thanksgiving, November 28th, 2020, as Small Business Saturday in the city of West Bend, and invite all residents and visitors to our great city to shop local. I'll note that there was some verbiage that has been modified, but I'd be looking for a motion to accept that proclamation. Second. Thank you, Alderman Dolnick and Allen. Uh, any other comments about Small Business Saturday? If not, then I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, send it by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. Thank you. And that passes. And we'll move on to uh, item number two, approval of the Common Council regular meeting, meeting minutes of October 19th at 6.30. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. A motion by Allen, second by a model. Any questions or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor, send it by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. And we'll consent the agenda with items 3 through 11. We'll pull out 12 and 13 for later. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Miles. Second by Allen. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, send by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And we'll move to item number 14, a public hearing. Public hearing on the proposed City of West Bend budget for the year of 2021. Um, just so we can set the ground rules, rules here, if you have a public comment, uh, feel free to come up to the podium, state your name and address. Uh, please keep your comments brief, professional, on point, and with a level of civility. Um, a public hearing is not meant to be back and forth or a time to ask questions, but rather as an opportunity to share statements of opinions. And with that, I will uh, open the public hearing for any who would like to step on up. Good evening. I have to give my name and address so you know that I'm a city resident. I think um, you're good. I have a couple comments. Um, i start out uh, that 2021 budget is the 18th budget that I have prepared. Um, first budget I prepared was in 2003, the 2004 budget. And at that time, and some of you have heard me say this before, Dennis Melvin was a city administrator, and he told me that was the most challenging budget in his time as city administrator. He said it was uh, gonna be tough, that we had to make cuts, we had to hold the line. And so my very first budget, we did that. We cut a police officer position, uh, we had to take, make several other cuts, and every other departments did the same. Every year since, we've been told the same thing. Every year, we've gotta cut, we've gotta hold the line. And I think most of the city managers here understand that, and we have worked with the city year after year. This budget that's being proposed is throughout the city, but I'm going to address the police in particular, is not a fat budget. And I will explain where some of the cost comes in, and some of it comes in because some changes that the city made over the years in the budgeting process. <clears throat> I will just tell you that some changes that the police department has done over the years. And there are two members of this council that were members of the police department. And I think they will attest and agree that we made changes administering overtime and our staffing levels, which have reduced the budget and held the line year after year. We have kept our vehicles longer. Um, you heard some of the departments are going to a lease. We have at one time we were turning in new vehicle or marked vehicles every three years, unmarked vehicles every seven years. We are now holding on to our marked vehicles at least three years. And this year's budget, we put one of the vehicles off even farther. Uh, it'll be probably six years old when we, if we replace it next year. We have unmarked cars that are 11 years, 12 years old that we are still using. The only increase in staff since I've been chief is one police officer spot that came back, which was a negotiation with the school district to help fund an additional spot. Some of the changes that were made over the years by the city that have increased the operating budget. Go back to the mayor's task force. I saw Mayor Sedonico here a little while ago. I don't know if he's still here. There he is. 
Um, and I'm, I think he'll agree with me on the changes that were made back then were to take some of the stuff out of borrowing and move into the operating. There were several recurring expenses, uh, things like our vehicles, computers, our ballistic vests, uh, the MDCs in the vehicles that are re reoccurring expenses that back up until that time were put into borrowing. When those were moved into operating, they increased the cost. And I bring that up because I'm gonna talk later about one of the expenses that's adding to our increase next year is cameras. And while I don't think the borrowing is appropriate for that for a number of reasons, it is one of the reasons why the operating expenses have gone up. I, by the way, agree with that. I agreed with it at the time. I think budgeting principles, when you know you have reoccurring expenses, we should budget for them year to year rather than borrow. And Alderman Kaler, I believe you were an alderman at that time, and I believe you and I had a discussion back then, and you agreed to that. Uh, Alderman Kennedy went back 10 years looking at the budget. I went back 10 years looking at the police department's operating budget. For the last 10 years, our average increase has been 1.7% on the police department. 1.7% that's lower than even what you cited for the general city budget. Two years ago, the city negotiated to take retiree health out of, or out of an option for new employees. The goal was to save money down the road uh, for the city. In return for that, the city negotiated additional increase. Again, that was brought up by Alderman Kaler, the last budget meeting, um, when he asked the question why the police department budget went up so much the last couple of years. That alone, this next year is adding over and above the normal increase that was given, is adding over $30,000 to our operating budget. When they took away the retiree health, the city offered a VEBA plan, the Voluntary Employee Benefit Account for newer employees. It comes to a couple thousand dollars a year, which is still a savings over what it would cost the city if they kept retiree health. They took that 43,000, which used to be put into an account for retiree health, and they put that into the police department's operating budget. So those two expenses alone, which was negotiated for long-term savings, and I don't have what those long-term savings are, but I imagine somebody figured that out when they negotiated it. That added $73,000 to our budget. You take that and then you look at the cameras, and I understand, I don't know if we need to have any further discussion on the cameras, but I believe everybody here realizes that is a reality in policing from this point forward. Um, that $92,000 added to the above expenses, $165,000. If you take that off of our increase for next year, which right now stands at $340,000, that means we are increasing the police department budget 2.25%. Non-personnel items, um, went up 86,000. That 86,000 includes two unique items. One is the cameras, which again, I don't think we need to go over again, that's 92,000. It also includes $15,000 more for recruit school reimbursement, and I want to explain that to the council members. Right now, hiring police officers is extremely difficult in the state, and it is extremely competitive. We have to offer some incentive to get officers to come to this city. One of the incentives we offer is a reimbursement of their recruit school. It's about $5,500 to $6,000 a piece. We are, right now we're going through a hiring process. I have four officers that are in recruit school. They will graduate in December, we'll hire them in January. When they're done with their probationary period, we reimburse them. That is extra money, and so for next year, that's an extra, we had, this year we had put some money in, next year we're having to put more because the amount of officers we've been hiring. That's an extra 15,000. If you take the camera cost and the recruit school uh, additional money, that's 107,000. 
The rest of our non-personal items were reduced by almost 21,000. So we've done as close a look as we can to reduce the items that we can. I'm gonna talk in, about police, uh, especially future, because uh, we also talked about negotiations taking place after this next year. Employee compensation and benefits, I believe we have to stay competitive. We cannot continue to, to cut the cost of both benefit, or I'm sorry, of the raises and increase the cost of health care and other benefits when other cities around us are not doing that. We have lost police officers to Madison, Franklin, Washington County, Waukesha County, Wauwatosa, and the Secret Service have all left this department and that's what we're competing with. We will continue to lose officers. And every time we lose an officer, it is costing us money. We may say, well, you know, they top pay and they're starting to lower. That doesn't take into account the recruitment cost, the testing cost, the training cost, the several months of having an officer, having to be in a, uh, two officers in a car. So we're losing efficiencies. I also want to make a comment, not directly related to the police, but the health care. For many, many years that I was chief, there was a health care account. That health care account was set up, and again, Alderman Kaler asked us at the last meeting why, that, why there isn't money when it's left over from the good years to offset some bad years of health care. That would help smooth out that cost and make some sense, and it would uh, make the tax levy lower in those years so you wouldn't have the big spike you're seeing in a year like this. And I suspect with the number of COVID and other healthcare issues that you're gonna see an increase again next year. I do not know why that account was changed, but it sure would make sense to me to put it back in. In addition to, I mentioned the difficulty in recruitment and staying in a competitive market. Alderman Kennedy, I think we all understand that some industries have been affected negatively by COVID. There are in fact other industries that have done well because of COVID and they are making money. So each year we can go and we can say there's businesses that do better and businesses that are doing worse. Overall, I, I don't think that the economy is as bad as it is being portrayed. I will also say that COVID has brought on some unique challenges to all city employees, particularly, and I'm just gonna cover the police department. Our officers have had to work long hours, extra risk to police. Um, today when I checked, 115 police officers throughout the United States have died from COVID exposure, at least one in Wisconsin. The police department several years ago took on, and I was assigned the emergency government director that this year took on a unique and challenging role and we spent several, several days and hours writing policies, procedures, making changes, healthcare stuff. Um, quite honestly, when I took on emergency government, I never thought I'd be doing a pandemic. I was prepared for a lot of things, but that took a tremendous amount of time and effort. West Bend officers uh, have been hit re relatively hard with COVID exposures um, each week in the last Several months I've had officers out sick with COVID. Each time they're out for two weeks at least. That increases uh, overtime for our officers, oftentimes on short notice. Since June, protests throughout the city, um, a number of related, uh, I won't go through each of them, but, but I think we all know what the protests were about up until last weekend. Um, and each weekend we've had them and, and officers oftentimes have been out till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night standing between opposing groups or uh, at least groups with opposing views in the middle of confrontations. We've had officers called up to National Guard that has also reduced our staffing. At the present time, I have six police officer positions open. I have another three anticipated by the end of the year. As I mentioned, that increases our workload and overtime. It increases our staff time to recruit and hire. It increases our staff time to educate and train. We have managed this throughout the year without going over our overtime budget. It may be tight by the end of the year, um, but we will have 
um, a lot of salary money left over um, is a, and I, that question was raised, I think, or who is Alderman Hoogester asked that at uh, a previous budget meeting about carrying that money over for cameras. I don't know what that amount's going to be. I do know that I have an estimate, or maybe a guesstimate is better uh, word. Um, and I also know that our revenues are going to be down, so it's not going to be um, totally accurate, but I'm sure some of that will help offset some of the costs we're talking about. In the past, that money when carried over helped offset capital expense, which is why I say if we do that this year and we use it to carry over for an operating, we're just keeping the borrowing up. So you're just robbing from Peter to pay for Paul. Um, I will tell you that I believe our budget is lean. I don't think there's any staffing we can cut. We already are short and we are short for a number of reasons as I just cited and I would recommend that our budget proceed as proposed and be approved. Thank you. Thank you Chief. Anybody any clarification? We'll continue the public hearing. If there's anybody from the public who would like to speak, come on up. If you could just state your name and address first, please. Sure, I'd be happy to. <coughs> Al Hefter, 2703 Esker Drive, District 3, Fighting Third. I want to dovetail off a little bit what the Chief Moiler said. Uh, charts, I appreciate the charts and graphs that the Alderman did. They're nice to, they're good, but from a historical perspective, what troubles me sometimes is I think the employees, our health insurance tends to be the easy battering ram for what costs the city money. In the spirit of full disclosure, I was a 30 year veteran, retired from the city fire department. I've been involved in every single negotiations from 1993 through 2021. For 21 years, I was fortunate to be the president of the Firefighters Association. So my background, other than probably the council and city administrators, nobody probably spent as much time as I have looking at city budgets. It's not a very sexy topic, but we did it for preparation for negotiations. And 2012, I was assigned to the Budget Repair Task Force by Mayor Sedonico. And as part of the Value Task Force, which Ole McKayla was a member of, I worked with the chief, former chief, almost on a daily basis, preparing for the Value Task Force report, which was released in June of 2013 and continues to be posted on the city website as of today. So health insurance is always a hot topic. It's been a topic of discussion every contract I've been involved in since 93. It's not an easy discussion. Health insurance is difficult and it's gonna get more difficult. Health insurance is expensive and I suspect it's gonna get more expensive. But from a historical perspective, from 2011 to 12 contract to today, our single deductibles were 200, 400 respectively. Today they're 2,500, 5,000. That's an 1,150% increase in deductibles in that time period. Our out of pocket expenses in 2012, 2011, were 150, 300 single family. Today they're 3,000, 6,000. That's a 1,900% increase. So 1150% 1150 increase in, de in deductibles, 1,900% increase in out-of-pocket expenses. Premium shares were 97,138, 97,122, and they're gonna be 138,270. It's a 41% increase for singles and 120% increase for premium shares for family. Or in other words, from 1470 a year to 3240. Our co-insurance used to be 90-10 for the first 1500. Now it's 80-20 until you're 3,000, 6,000 satisfied. Conversely, premiums single in 2012 was about $540 a month. Family was 812. That's a 51% increase over that time period or $30 a year. 
Family premiums in 12 were 1,435, and if today's numbers are accurate, it's about 1,786, which is a 24% increase of 39 a year. I bring that up because this premium increases and the co-insurance deductible have far outpaced premium increases. The reason premium increases have stayed what they are is because the deductibles have gone up 1,150%, out of pockets have gone up 1,900%, Premium shares have gone up 41% and 120%. Now I would submit to you that there's people that have it worse. There are. There's private sector and public sector employers that have it worse than we do. There's some that have it better. But when it comes to the fire department budget, I can share with you that game changers have been WS contribution. After Act 1032, non-reps were paid the employer sh employee share of their WS contribution. We negotiated with the city over 12, 13, 14, 15, we phased in WS contributions, which was mutually agreed upon between us and the city. That in today's dollars, conservatively speaking, conservatively speaking, WS contributions probably average in the fire department about 5,000 annually per employee. Conservatively speaking, that's 200,000 a year. They went back to the city budget because the city wasn't on the hook for the employee share of the rest contributions. So you add that up in 2015 to today, conservatively speaking, it'd be a million dollars per year. It's a lot of money. We volunteered to do it. We, we voluntarily got an agreement with the city to do that. That's a big chunk of change. Back in 1213, the talk was Gasby 45. Gasby 45. The mayor's here, all the McKaylor's here. Gasby 45 was the talk. Got to bend the curve. Got to bend the curve. Unfunded liability. All right? I get it. Yeah. There was an unfunded liability. So, through the course of negotiations, Mayor Sedonico was in the back of the room. Through the course of negotiations, we went from paid health insurance for firefighters and police. I can speak for the police because we were dovetailed together for 10 years. Then we bent the curve and went for five years for new employees that were hired after 13. And in 2018 today, we eliminated it. And as the Chief Morley said, we implemented a VIPA plan. If you add up the WS contributions, if you add up the elimination of post-employment health insurance, and the 1900 percent increase, 1150 percent increase, and 40 percent increase, and 120 percent increase in premium shares, we've stepped up. I'm not here to debate whether or not $16 on a $200,000 house is a lot of money, or conversely, $1.33 a month. I'm not here to debate that. I'm here because I find it troubling that there's this mindset of us against you. Us versus you. You against us. That has to stop. Yeah, there's people who have it better. Yes, there's people who have it worse. I had a great career. I love being a firefighter. I never had the potential to make a million dollars. Didn't want to. Wanted to make a million dollars, I should have gone to college and be in business. Wanted to make a lot of money, I should have been a doctor. Should have been, I didn't want to be one. I wanted to be a firefighter EMT. But I can tell you, we have never, ever had a contract go to arbitration. We had voluntary settlements from 1969 to today, every year. And that include post-employment health insurance, WS country, I mean big changes, big changes. Implemented a paramedic program. I don't have the, amount, the number in front of me. Chief Kudik's here. But when I left that program, it was generating about $3 million a year. We worked incredibly hard to get that program implemented. Why? Because it offsets the budget. And the value task force findings will tell you that if you add up the income and subtract from the expenses per capita cost, the fire department is a well-run operation. It's just true. It's just an absolute fact. So I like the charts, I like the graphs, but there's way more that goes into this. Way more than a dollar here, a dollar there, a percent here, a percent. Historically, there's been a significant amount of give and take. There just has. And I can tell you that the employees in the city of West Bend are hardworking individuals. 
Our department heads and staff are hardworking individuals. Being a fire chief, being a police chief in this climate is not easy. Because they get it from the top down, they get it from the bottom up. So, like I said, I'm not here to debate whether $1.33 a month in my taxes is too much. Personally, for the city, and if he needs vests for his officers and body cameras to keep them safe, I'm all in. And if it's truly $16, that's truly what it is, and if it's, if it's true that 12% of that $16 is earmarked for health insurance, if that's true, that's $1.96 a month. So for me, my issue is the fact that health insurance and employees become the convenient battering ram for budgets. And I find that to be fundamentally unfair. So I think our employees in this city do a heck of a job. And part of the Value Task Force, as hard as I worked on that with our chief, and we gave the presentation, and Alderman Kaler is here to tell you, it's on the website, you can read it. I can only speak for the fire department, but they're a lean operation. It's that simple. So I thank you for your time, but historically, from a historical perspective, there's been a significant, a significant amount of give back and savings to the employer, just in insurance and WS contributions alone. Those are big, big numbers. And I didn't see them on any graphs, but I know the numbers because I was at, I had a seat at the table and the numbers are there to prove it. So thanks for your time. Thanks, sir. And I'll open it up if anybody else from the public would like to step up. Hello, Council. Craig Sedanico, 1125 North Silverbrook Drive. Al, my friend, and one time at, uh, I'll say adversary, but that's not exactly right. We always had good open discussions. Um, thanks to Al for his passion. Um, for the city and for his people. Uh, there's, it it sure, certainly sign, shines through even in retirement. Um, only one debate that maybe we'll take out into the hallway is, um, I don't know if there were a whole lot of give backs, there was a whole lot of negotiation. And he's right, we never went to arbitration. Uh, we butted heads, we left the room, we came back a week later, uh, we got things sorted out like West Benders do. But I don't know if there's a lot of free stuff, there was a lot of negotiation back and forth. Overall, I'd just like to say thanks. This is how budgets should go. Um, I don't feel as though anything that I've read um, in the paper or the bit that I've watched on TV, I don't know that anybody here is saying that a municipal employee is, is bad or that they deserve less in health insurance. This is simply how budgets go. Um, there isn't an employer at my company that thinks um, they've got an unlimited amount to spend. Uh, looking at all of you, I know there are volunteers at your church organizations. Um, volunteering in your local business communities, volunteering for different municipal uh, services. If you've been involved in those budgets, I've been involved in the YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Rotary Clubs, Waterways Foundations. This is just simply how a budget process takes place. And all that any entity uh, tries to do is live within their means. I served with some of you that remember uh, what it was like in budgeting when condominiums were going down in value, three, four, five, ten percent a year. It's pretty difficult to hold a mill, mill rate steady when the value of the community is going down, and in many cases we're able to do it. There were some lean, lean years. My understanding is, and I could be wrong, um, that this year um, the growth in the economy, the growth in the municipality is allowing for more dollars than last year while holding the mill rate the same, if you held the mill rate the same, that it's really not a debate or a discussion about um, reducing the overall mill rate. Again, my understanding is the, that uh, the levy is increasing, revenue is increasing, even staying at the current mill rate. The debate is, do you need the extra 16 bucks on top of that? Do you need the extra eight cents um, per thousand in the mill rate? So I just wanna make sure that anybody at home watching on TV or anyone in the audience that, um, that isn't part of this, and most of you look like you're neck deep in the municipal budget. Um, that's pretty uh, a pretty big difference to make. We're not talking about not increase. You're not talking about not increasing the city's budget. You're talking about not increasing the tax rate. And I like to simplify that in my mind. That if my home doesn't change in value, I won't pay any more in taxes. I'm not going to pay less. But if the mill rate is held the same and my home stays the same value, I don't pay any more. The city is living off of 
hopefully smart development, smart growth, new homes, new businesses uh, in the community. And again, I don't know exactly what that number is, but I believe that's to the tune of a couple, 3% maybe on the overall, overall budget, which seems to beat inflation. So I'd ask that we live within our means, um, certainly take into account everything you've heard here tonight, because these are some pretty hardworking, uh, dedicated individuals, uh, but at the same time, there hasn't been a budget that I've been involved in municipally, personally, or on a volunteer basis where it was open up the barn door and the dollars can go flying out. It, this is the process, and, and thanks for going through it like you guys have. Have a good night. Thanks, Kirk. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to speak? Going once, going twice. Otherwise, I'll call for a motion to end the public hearing. So moved. Second. Thank you. Motion by Hoodister, second by Allen. All those in favor of ending the public hearing, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And we'll move on to agenda items for consideration. Number 15, a resolution appropriating the necessary funds for the operation of the government and administration of the city of West Bend for the year of 2021. Um, I'll ask for a motion first on the resolution as uh, as presented, and then we can take into consideration the amendment. Yep, sure, thank you. So Alderman Muddle and Allen. Uh, Alderman Kennedy, did you want to put up your amendment? Yes, I would like to uh, motion at this time uh, that the West Bend Common Council keep the mill rate the same at the 7.85% for 2021. Uh, and that would remove, again, 239000 That is going to give our administration, as was just spoken about, 4% additional dollars from last year, an additional $909,662 from last year to carry out our 2021 needs. Um, I find it imperative that we stay all in with our taxpayers, and the flat rate means we still have more money to operate on this year, the $909,662. I think we can make that work. Uh, again, I'm not mandating any items in the budget, but I would like to change uh, the budget to be, uh, I believe it's, I'm sorry, I don't have it, 2.7. Uh, $22,798,774. I'm sorry, $22,798,775 is what I'd like to propose to keep the mill rate the same. I'll second that second. amendment. But yeah. with that, I'd also like to say that this budget in no way reflects anything against our employees. It's unfortunate that certain people choose to point out a couple of items that affect the budget, make the whole budget about our employees. Many things that contribute to this budget. And I, would, I think all of you know, I've always stood up for our employees. I value our employees. And this is in no way a jab against our employees, but I think we can live with the extra just about a million dollars and still give our employees <coughs> raises as Alderman Kennedy had proposed in the past. So I'll second that. Chris, point of order. Sorry. Yep. No. Uh, you can't pass an unbalanced budget. The amendment has to specify what's going to be removed from the budget. You can't reduce funding without reducing expenditures in the budget. So can so, you clar clarify that? So approval of that amendment would result in an illegal budget. Uh, uh, you have to specify what you're removing from the budget. You can't just remove income without removing expenditures to have a balanced budget. You have to pass a balanced budget. So, so can the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I guess I just am confused. So you would like us to line item $900 in turbo tax for the parks department must be removed fifty dollars in you have to pass a balanced budget the budget as presented has more expenditures than the amendment would would have income so yes if you're going to remove income from the budget you have to specify what expenditures you're removing from the budget you can't just not specify what is being removed to achieve what alderman kenny is looking for could it be a motion to table with looking for that levy difference? Right, I mean, my, obviously the department heads and the administration um, are the ones that I would think need to, to look at the budgets that they have. Uh, I think it seems inappropriate for the, the council to decide, um, you know, 
what exactly to count just because you know if if we try to allocate it and then somebody comes back with what is I think that's exactly the council's role. Mayor, if I may, I, we've had this discussion before. Um, Mayor and Megan, I've asked for any amendments that might be coming in advance of tonight and have not received any. The, it's always a part of a budget that once it's presented from your city administrator, myself to the council, in order to make a change, you need to tell me where the change is coming from. and. We had an initial budget conversation. We talked about it. We made some change. I presented those changes back to you. You got the final budget publication. If you're going to take a motion on removing X from the expenditure budget to, to get down to the minus eight cents, that's, that's your job right now. That's what you need to do. I'm not recommending that. I'm recommending the budget that's before you at 793. Can you, can you maybe describe what happened last year to clarify what we're talking about right now in real general terms, or is that too much? I think I can. The last year it was it's it similar was a, to what we're. It was similar but different. So okay. last year there was a proposal um, to add six cents to the budget and not um, take money out of fund balance. And I'm absolutely not recommending you take two hundred and forty thousand dollars out of fund balance to plug the artificial hole of it would be a reoccurring hole of the of the future budgets. So the, the motion made last year was to add the six cents back into the budget because the um, council had um, taken action to remove it previous to that. So that, that, and that passed, and so the budget was changed. And we actually had two sets of budget books prepared that night. Obviously we don't in, in, in tonight's meeting, in advance of that meeting in 2020, or 2019 for 2020. Thank you, Jake. Two questions. Uh, how much contingency is in the budget right now? It's like 60,000. I have to look 60, at 60,000. Okay. 60,000, $67,176. Thank you. Thank you. Would we be able to motion to table this? Include that in the, in the motion. So that if you're talking about postponing to a future budget, meeting or a special budget meeting you'd have to set that the the next council meeting is scheduled for december 7th it's it's if you're going to lay when you say unless you're asking about laying something on the table for action later this evening that that could be what you're after so how would that look jay that option if that was one to lay it on the table to discuss where you're going to make a recommendation to change the <laughs> I don't know. That's what you're. That's up to you, as a council. So, if the motion was to remove the two hundred thirty-nine thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars from the levy, what? Can you explain again why does it need to be specified down to the line item? What? Because really, we're setting what the levy is going to be, and we're lowering it by two hundred thirty-nine thousand. Because the right? budget, as presented, has expenditures in that amount and you're removing income. You have to pass a balanced budget. And, and what is before you has expenditures. And as Jay pointed out, you know, and as Chief has pointed out, et cetera, this is the budget presented by the administrator. It is now, if there's policy changes that you are looking for, it is now up to the policy-making body to say, this is where you need to cut money, this is where you need to cut money, this is where you need to cut money in order to balance the budget. You can't just remove you, you you can't just remove income and say figure it out. The budget is being passed with expenditures and income. And going forward, there has to be budget amendments as we pass on a very regular basis if we have to move money around within that budget. So you need to specify by line item what it's going to be. You can't just remove the income. So I guess I would turn to you, it's your motion, if you want to make any specifics or changes. I'd like to motion that we keep the tax rate at the 7.85% and table it to a special meeting. Is that enough of a motion or you need more specific? Well, uh, attorney Proust? Post, okay, I'm sorry. But I, I believe the city has to have their budget passed by November 11th, according to statutes. Yeah. Um, I might be off a day or two. So we, we would have to table this till tomorrow night or to Wednesday night? 
Okay. So, so that's why I was suggesting if you're going to lay something on the table to discuss it, that's different than postponing it. And I know Stephanie used the, that's what you're talking about doing. If, if you're talking about having a discussion about whacking some line items to 240,000, that that's what you should be talking about, not, not putting it off for tonight or tomorrow. I don't know what's going to be any different tomorrow versus tonight. I'm going to represent or recommend the same budget to you to be adopted. For example, the 240000 I was just clicking through the budget, would be the removal of the IS department or development department or city clerk's department, assessor's department. Those are about $240,000 worth of general levy. I, I'm not recommending any of that, but that's, that's what you're talking about, significant uh, service reductions and staffing reductions at, at this level of, of conversation. Well, I think to me it's more about, um, you know, if you want the council to take a fine-tooth comb, um, you know, I think it's more about the department heads knowing, you know, what what expenses and where they could potentially budget over time differently. Um, for example, I know I looked at packet in the budget packet. I think there's uh, page 91 of the budget. Let me just scroll to that quickly. I'm just going to kind of give a give an example of why I think that that might be difficult for us to do right now in this. I got a question. If I withdraw the second on the motion, the motion dies, correct? Right. Yep. I mean, I, I guess this discussion should have taken place before right now. I'm gonna withdraw my second. Yep. I'll call for a second on Alderman Kennedy's new motion. Okay, so that motion will die. Are there any other motions for amendments? Otherwise, you do have a motion on the floor for uh, for the budget as presented. If there's no other comments, then I will call for a vote. All those in favor of approving? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Alderman Dolan. Go ahead. We're having discussion about the budget resolution, right? If you'd like. I, yep. I, I, and with with the patience of the council, I mean, we have a lot of people who are watching. And I just, I guess, got to say a few things because I've been mulling about this for the last three weeks, what what was going to happen. Um, you know, this isn't Hooterville in 1960, and uh, there are certain ways that things should be done. And when you don't talk to the city administrator and you don't talk to the city attorney or someone in City Hall, this is what happens, uh, what we just witnessed. That's number one. It's not how you do a budget. And all you had to do was ask the city administrator instead of waiting three weeks to spring a proposal to do an across the board cut, which can't be done, with an analysis that says additional dollars to operate uh, the city is plenty. I don't know how you define plenty. Um, for the people who are at home wondering because a lot of people are at home watching this because of social media. We discussed this first on July 6th when Baker Tilly was here to do the audit to tell us how the books were. On July 20th, we had the initial budget projections presented to us by the city administrator. On August 17th, we had a presentation by our bond council, Ehlers, to talk about how much debt we were in and how we were paying it off. On September 14th, we had the Capital Projects Budget Review. That's where all the big ticket items are, when the streets are gonna get fixed, cars get replaced, or, or not, not cars, but major pieces of equipment. We had the first budget presentation go over on October 5th, and that's this, okay? This thing is 356 pages. Now there's a lot of background information in here, not just budget. This is what we had. On October 12th, we spent three hours, we were here from six to 9 p.m., and we went through this thing page by page. All the department heads were here, and we asked them questions. And after that meeting, we got follow-up from the city administrator with more data, more data, answering the questions that we had. On October 19th, we met again. And all the changes that were incorporated went into this, which is what we have tonight. 
This is pure budget, 310 pages. So for anybody who thinks that all we did as council members was come here and listen to the administrator, tell us what the budget was going to be, and we all nod our heads like a bunch of Packer dolls, okay, Jay, and that's not what it was. We went over everything. And Alderman Kennedy has submitted, re had submitted requests, and if we're not agreeing with Alderman Kennedy, it's not because we're not listening to her, or if we're, I should say, if we're not acting upon what she said, it's not that we're not respecting her or listening to her, but we disagree with some of the things she wanted to do. Like cut $30,000 off of the crossing guards. I'm not telling my constituents I'm cutting the crossing guards. I'm not telling them I'm cutting back on the library another 30,000 when they already got cut 35,000. And you know, the body cameras, 96,000, You'll spend 96000 on the first lawsuit just for the legal fees if you don't have body cameras. And that comes down then finally, that comes finally down to the city employees. And the mayor has characterized $240,000 increase, and I quote you, mayor, as a drop in the bucket. Well, if $240,000 is a drop in the bucket, what do you call $43,000? Because that's the total impact on our entire budget for those stupid little pay raises that are being talked about. About one and a half cents on the increase. And you've heard why our departments are asking for that in order to stay competitive. So. We all pay taxes. Every one of us up here pays taxes. We know what we're doing, and we know we're not happy about it. But there is an expense to keep the city going and to keep the streets plowed, and we can tell our residents we're getting the job done. And incidentally, I didn't get one single phone call or one single email from a constituent in the last three weeks. So I believe the city of West Bend taxpayers are satisfied. They're getting a full measure for their dollar and that's what we can promise them. They're getting a full measure for their dollar to keep the city operating. Thanks for your patience, other council members. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alderman Dolan. Would I be able to respond? Sure, go ahead. Uh, a few points. Some of the numbers, I mean, we did start budget discussions, absolutely. Some of those numbers were very liquid. Um, some of the final insurance numbers didn't come in uh, for a few weeks. Um, so yes, you're, you're right. We did talk about, obviously, the 2% raise was something that when Administrator Shambo, myself, and Chris met, that was something that we both made clear we were not wanting to see tax increases, um, and that was something that, that we were thinking would not uh, result in a tax increase. Um, but obviously with the different cost of insurance, et cetera, again, things were working numbers. I know you quoted that the library got cut 35,000. Uh, just in the budget, the way I see it, the library in 2020 was 716,000, uh, 985. In 2021, the library is set to have 740,832, so the library is getting an additional $24,000 in this budget the way it's written. They're not getting a 35% cut, so I don't know where that came from. Um, I got that from this. We were all told that by the city administrator. So you're both right. It was, it was cut uh, from the, what hasn't been discussed tonight is the $962,000 that was cut from initial requests from budget. And that, and that, that cut takes place during that timeline that Alderman Dolnick describe to everybody the, or those cuts I should say the, and the library cut is one of those included in that and that that's a cut to more than what they asked for and it's because of health insurance is why it went down the 30,000 but it did their library levy is up in 2021 over the 2020 levy amount of 716 that's an accurate number I think it's 742 now but it was they, their request was significantly more than that, like the $30,000 that Alderman Doyle mentioned. So, you're, so absolutely, you're both right on that topic. Anything else, Alderman Kennedy? I think that that was, I just wanted to make sure that we were clear on some of the numbers were working and, and the library's not being cut by 35%. Sounds good. Any other comments from the council? Then I will call for a vote. All those in favor of passing the resolution as presented, sit on saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 
Uh, I'm guessing it's six to two, but can I get a roll call vote, staff, just to be sure? Alderman Butchlick? Aye. Alderman Allen? Aye. Alderman Berquist? Aye. Alderman Kaler? No. Alderman Dolnick? Aye. Alderman Hugester? Aye. Alderman Model? Aye. Um, Alderman Kennedy? No. 6 2, motion carries. Thank you. And I just wanted to echo a lot of the comments that were made tonight. Uh, thank you. Thank you to city staff, our residents, business owners, everybody who is here. Um, I, 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 I think we all acknowledge that if we are all on the same page all the time and we all agreed with each other, this wouldn't be quite as fun. Um, but I definitely appreciate everybody uh, uh, being a part of this process and giving their input, sharing their ideas. Um, and I, I believe that our residents and our businesses um, and our property owners uh, can feel confident that uh, regardless of this outcome, um, that they are well watched over with our city council. So thank you everybody on that. And I will move on to item number 16. It's a preliminary resolution to vacate a portion of Schmidt Road from the north right of way line of East Washington Street to 400.7 feet south of the center quarter corner of section 12 T11 North R19E and east west right of way for an unnamed road east of Schmidt Road and the northern portion of Rolfs Avenue by the Development Department City of West Bend. That was a tongue twister. Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Um, tonight's request is a preliminary resolution approval um, to vacate or to start the vacation process for that portion of Schmidt Road, um, an unnamed portion of road, and also Ralph's Avenue. Um, the city and the county back in 2015 entered into an agreement, and as part of that um, agreement, there was um, the, the agreement to de or vacate those portions of the road and then also. Um, rededicate portions of road for Ralph's Avenue, which um, will come to the council in the future for dedication. So tonight's um, action is to initiate the vacation process and also to set a public hearing for December 21st of 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Um, to finalize that vacation process. So tonight's action is just to initiate the, the process for the street vacation. Thank you. I'm looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, motion by Dolnick, second by Allen. Any questions? No, it's Steve Hugister. Oh, I'm sorry. Hugister. Hugister. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions then? If not, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 The opposed. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And then at 17, a resolution for the Urban Wildlife Damage Abatement and Control Grant. Mike. All right, thank you. Um, tonight we have a urban forestry wildlife damage and abatement control resolution for you uh, to consider. This resolution would be with the Department of Natural Resources for controlling the population of deer and geese in Forest City Parks, Bicentennial Park, Regner Park, Lackland Ranch Conservancy, and Ridge Run Park. Uh, the grant cannot exceed $5,000, and this uh, grant would help offset the goose and deer abatement programs that we run, basically the goose program is in Regner Park. Um, the other parks are for the deer abatement program. Um, we've applied for this grant in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past and, and have not been successful. We score pretty high, but on the state level, they only have $25,000 available for this grant on the state level. So that's what this grant is, or the resolution is, uh, is for this evening. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion by model, second by Alan. Any questions? Yeah, one one yep. quick question. Um, do they attempt to spread this out year over year? In other words, will we eventually get lucky, get money? <laughs> I think eventually we probably will get lucky. Um, normally, the same communities don't get the grants year after year after okay. year. Um, it's for new programs, expanding programs, things of that nature. Um, we are expanding our deer program or our control program again this year. So we scored fairly high in the past. Um, it's just other communities have scored a little bit higher than us. So um, sooner or later, we'll get it most likely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? The key is to be get the other ones out and then our community will be next in line. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, persistence will pay off, I believe. Yes. There you go. Then I will call for a vote. So all those in favor, sit up by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, sir. 
And we can move on to uh, reports. Number 18, a report by Alderman Burquist regarding the library board meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The last meeting was held on Tuesday, October 20th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, after we took care of all the business of the board, the uh, approval of the agenda, consent agendas, financial reports, we talked about the library's director's report, uh, which discussed how COVID's been influencing the statistics and how, how they've been working through that. Uh, old business included an update from the Monarch Library system. You know, that's the system that we're enrolled with, that we work with in the operating of the library. And we had that update. Uh, we spent some discussion time on the approval of the memorandum of understanding with the Park and Recs Department for the Library Recreation Center. Uh, that was a very good discussion and ended up being approved. We discussed the 2021 library operating budget and uh, obviously approved that. So um, we adjourned the meeting. The next meeting will be scheduled for November 17th. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, has any, uh, has there been any progress on a new director? I've, I heard tonight from the president that we have 17 applicants that are, uh, have submitted paperwork. So well, we're getting quite a few. Any internal? Yes, there are. In yes. <laughs> Great to hear. That's okay. it. Thanks. Any other cool. questions for Brett? Then moving on to number 19, a report by Alderman Donick or Hoogester regarding the Planning Commission meeting. Who's taking okay. it? <laughs> we met on November 4th. A um, couple of things we did. Um, had a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a tattoo and body piercing establishment at 622 Elm Street. One of the uh, units in that building, and that was approved. Um, we had a request by a gentleman who wants to take the two existing lots at 1390 and 1404 Hawthorne Drive and make them into one lot. That was approved. Uh, the site plan for redevelopment uh, at 1043 South Main Street, which was the Dairy Queen, that was approved. Another site plan, actually two site plans for 2220 Stonebridge and 2230 Stonebridge for sto uh, storage buildings, which were approved. A site plan for a pickup window at the new Toppers Pizza, uh, 218, I'm sorry, 210 North 18th. On the south side of a building, uh, that was approved. And the last thing we discussed was the renovation of the Regner Park Beach House. Uh, they showed us the site plan for that. Uh, there's some very interesting things being done over there. It's gonna look beautiful when it's done, but it's gonna take a while to do, but they're working hard on it and getting funding on it. And that also was approved. That was it. Sounds great. Any questions for Alderman Hoogester? And if there's not, I'm going to recess the Common Council so we can go back into finance. Alderman Kennedy. All right, I will make a motion to enter into closed session uh, to entertain a motion to adjourn, okay, <laughs> um, for deliberate uh, <laughs> the negotiation or purchase of public properties and investing of public funds uh, or conducting other specific uh, public business whenever competitive bargaining reasons require a closed session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You have to have, you have a roll call. A roll, roll call vote for oh, Alderman Butchlick? Aye. Alderman Allen? Aye. Alderman Burkus? Aye. Alderman Kaler? Aye. Alderman Dolnick? Aye. Alderman Hoogister? Aye. Alderman Model? Aye. Alderman Kennedy? Aye. We are in closed session.
All right, uh, coming back from closed session um, for the finance meeting, I would need a motion to postpone uh, what is on the table. A motion to postpone the uh, item until December 7th meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. With that, with that, I will close the uh, finance meeting and adjourn. And I'll bring our Common Council meeting back. We have two more items to look at. Item number 12 is a resolution approving the sale of Mutual Mall. Look for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Mr. By Allen. Second by model. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, sit by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And then as was done in finance, uh, we're gonna look for a motion to uh, table the approval of the purchase of land to December 7th. Second. Thank you. Motion by Dolnick, second by Allen. Any questions on that? Seeing none, all those in favor, send by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Wonderful, and I'll open up if there's any announcements from the order. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank all military members or former military members uh, on the city staff and any of our constituents. Uh, I know John is is uh, uh, a former Army veteran, and uh, Brett also is a veteran. I'm a veteran. Um, thank you for your service, gentlemen. Thank thank you all the city employees that are veterans, and uh, there is a. Uh, traditional um, Veterans Day celebration at 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month. Um, and that is at the Historical Society on Poplar Street. So anybody that wants to go, please remember to bring a mask and socially distance. And uh, uh, that's, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Any other announcements? Mark, wasn't it starting at 1045? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the announcement when I got to 11, but yeah, okay. yeah, I'm sure <laughs> showing up early wouldn't be a bad idea since you got to space out. Right. Honorable Model? I just got some thank yous. Uh, HVVA normally has a very small Christmas decorating party around this time of the year, but this morning we had a very big Christmas decorating party. Can I thank people by name or just say thanks to the folks that helped us out? I really, I just <laughs> wanted to thank you by name because I really appreciate it, but yeah, you, you know who you are. Very good, thank you. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Otherwise, having uh, no business for the Common Council, I'll adjourn by the call of the chair. Have a great night. Thank you.